Hello and welcome to No Man's Land. So in this uh, tutorial I'll show you how to um, get set up and started with the best combat sim ever made. Rise of Light. And best of all, it's 100% free. Yeah, you heard me. It's totally free. You don't have to pay anything. So what are you waiting for? Let's just go to riseoflight.com. Then you click here on game, download game, and download again. And uh, it's 8 gigabyte. And after that, you have to unzip it and run the installer. So after you've done that, uh, you should um, log in and register on the page. Like uh, I have an account here. So, because if you want to play multiplayer, you need uh, a verified account uh, attached to the game. Uh, and uh, it also tracks your career if you want to play single player uh, career mode. So then you also need to have a login account. So just do that right away while you're downloading. And uh, after we can check the store of the game. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. I have to pay. Yeah. But no, you don't have to pay anything. You can play it completely for free if you want. You get this uh, Albatross DVA for free. It's a very good plane, stable, good for beginners. And uh, you get the Spad 13 for free also, the Allied side, and this is a German plane. Um, you can buy tons of plane assets here, but uh, they are have different purposes. So it depends what you like. If you want to be a bomber or a recon plane, you can buy those or. Uh, other fighters here, as you can see, plenty of fighters. Uh, different time periods too. These are older. This is this is a newer one in the late of the war. So, yeah. So, an old plane feels very much very different. So, uh, a new plane can almost feel like almost like a new game almost sometimes because it's so different to fly fly and you have to have different uh, controls for it, um, setups, etc. So it's a bit uh, deep game. Uh, it can be a bit intimidating to maybe new players. That's why I also wanted to make this tutorial so it will be more easier for you. So yeah, and uh, if I um, log in to my account here, you can see I bought many planes because I bought this. This game is from 2009 actually, so it's uh, over 10 years old now. So I bought many planes. And as you can see, the, it's on sale now. It's just cost one dollar for planes. That's very cheap. But you can also buy modification for a plane too, like uh, extra guns, gun sights. You don't need all this. It won't make you a better flyer. But it's if you want to support the developers and um, uh, and so on, you can buy it. And it's a bit cool to see how many bullets you have left, or how warm your engine is, or the clock and uh, altimeter how high up you are and so, some planes also come with this from before it not not all planes you have to buy this so it depends on the plane too yeah so that being said i can uh, we can go into the game and i can show you the setup after you install the game you will automatically go to an update page update page because you need to update it it's about 800 uh, megabytes and uh, after that, you just set up your graphic settings. I just put mine on high, everything. Uh, if you have a decent, good rig, it should run high. But it's still a pretty resource, uh, resource of a game. So if you have a very old computer, it may, may not run as good. But you can still try it. So, yeah, HDR medium, I recommend. It, it looks better this way. If you set it on high, so it becomes a bit too dark in some areas. So I like medium. And uh, bloom, raindrops, uh, makes it look very good. The bloom isn't annoying in this game. It's more like the sun reflects good on the some metal surfaces, so it looks very good. Uh, full screen, vertical synchronization, I recommend. Uh, FPS limiter 60. Um, everything on high or maximum. Antalizing 4 makes it look very good. And anisotropic 8. More details in on the far away on the ground. Um, game settings here you can install mods for the game I'll make another video later for that and if you run mods you need to check this to run it because if you run mods you can't play multiplayer because some mods are like they it's not if you have different mods than other players the game would it wouldn't work very well so um, also could be cheating so you need to 
turn this off if you want to play multiplayer and on if you just want to make the game look a bit better and uh, change some gameplay settings. Sound 64-bit uh, I recommend if you have 64-bit system, 64 sounds you can play at the same time. And sound quality I would put it on high, it's default on medium for some reason, I don't know why. So just put it on high and that's basically everything so we can just go into the game now. So now we're in the game and you should log into your account that you already made. And it will track your uh, career and progress and everything. Like you see how I roll my medals I've received from single player career mode. So you have quick missions and you can just fly some action if you want. Mission, it's scripted missions for the game. And campaigns are uh, also scripted longer campaigns. You have like... Uh, this comes to the game, a hat in the ring, it's like a story driven campaign, it's pretty cool. And you have, uh, I would also recommend going through the training campaigns, it shows you how to fly the game properly. And uh, career mode is pretty cool, you can start a career with a pi any pilot you want, western front or the channel map. The channel map you have to buy extra, it's a DLC. Um, and uh, what's pretty cool about this uh, career is that you can fly a guy and you follow his career from the start of war and the war. You, you decide when you start what planes you want to fly and you get medals, uh, rewards, etc. And it, it tracks your progress. It's, it's very dynamic. Very cool. And um, also your teammates, squad mates, they can die. So, yeah, it's pretty fun. And you also get news reports from, from every week from the war. Like real newspaper reports uh, they have printed. So you. You, you sort of learn a bit about the World War One in this game a lot, and, uh, and multiplayer of course. If people still play multiplayer, they play it uh, usually in the weekends. You have um, sometimes up to twenty players playing it, but today it's more like a hardcore play group who has been playing this for over ten years, and uh, they are very good. So it's a bit challenging. And what you want to do now is go to options and set up your plane. So you can play it with a mouse and joystick if you want. Uh, me, I recommend having a joystick and uh, with a throttle and uh, also rudder pedals for best control of the plane. And also track yards, like track your yards ahead uh, set. You put on you put on a hat with some stuff on and you put uh, a, a thing on your <laughs> on your uh, screen and it basically just track your head movement so you can look around in the cockpit. You saw I used it in the video on the intro, uh, so you can easily look around. Yeah, but you can also yeah, play it with a mouse, like I said, and you can turn off all the realism settings in the game, so it becomes very arcade-ish, not uh, realistic, but that's that's not why I want to fly this, you, you want to fly this for the realism, because it's very fun once you start to master it. So yeah, what you want to do now is go to controls, and you want to map your controls, and if you already have a joystick installed, it will automatically detect it, but you will still have to run over some things, that's quite important. So, um, I'll just go over the most important now. Uh, the first uh, thing people do wrong in this game when I see the fly, especially new players who come to multiplayer, is that they don't set up their engine controls. And the radiator is very important. It makes that your uh, radiator gets uh, coolant and uh, don't heat up. So just Map this to axis on your joystick or uh, some buttons or whatever so you can control the radiator. And uh, then I would go to mixture. Uh, many planes use mixture control, so set up axis or control for that. It's basically just, just how much fuel you give to your engine. So usually on a, on a, when you want to start a plane you want to have full mixture and uh, zero throttle. And altitude throttle, basically the same as mixture, so just set, I set it up with the same axis. And um, engine controls, that just throttle, that's very important, so set that up to axis or buttons if you don't have a throttle. And um, yeah, some engine use blip switch, basically just a switch you click so you turn off your engine and when you release it, it gets on again. It, don't have to go into details there, but uh, some people use it when they turn the plane to turn it faster, they switch on and off their engine. so. It bounces around. 
it's a technique. And the engine start stop, very important. No, normally it's just the E button on the keyboard. And then you want to go to con plane controls and you want to set up your uh, uh, yaw, that's the rudder, that's when the rudder pedal says it makes your plane go right and left, sort of you bank right and left with your tail. And uh, then you have the roll on your joystick, you just move your joystick to the left, if the plane will roll or pitch, you will push or pull the joystick and it will go down or up. So these are the um, three most important ones for the plane. You have stabilizer, but just just a few planes have it, I think. just Maybe just one, the SA-5A. And uh, that's it for that. And then you need to go to pilot head controls, because you need to set up your... Uh, your weapons in the game so then you want to go to down here and just map the head move forward backward left right up down and also zoom in zoom out and reset zoom button that's very important and also save snap and snap mode uh, default is just f10 but I'm remapped it to left control 10 f10 so I don't accidentally hit it because when you save your head snap you can't go back to default that will be the default so if you save a bad position then you need to readjust it and save it again so this is important don't don't uh, set up your head bad that it's just a default to uh, the way you look in your cockpit so and that's it that's what you need uh, basically first rest here you can flight clear commands pilot gestures camera controls you can Check that later, but it's not important uh, in the beginning. Also, you have to go into responses, but I can uh, show you that later for playing what it actually means. Um, I can just go over it now. Let's say that uh, we'll fly the Albatross for this tutorial. So here, as you go, I just used the pitch here, go down to the pitch, and you see the curve is a bit minus. That basically means that when you fly the plane, the plane, the faster you go and on any plane it will automatically push upwards because of the wind uh, coming to the wings and the, the plane wants to fly up and the plane always the nose starts to go up and when you fly a lot then that means you have to push the uh, you have to push the um, joystick forward to compensate so the plane flies straight and that's a bit tiring in the long run so I just set up this minus curve that means so I can fly the plane fully fast forward and I can release my joystick and the plane will fly straight so that's but you need to set up differently for every plane like like you see the fucker DR1 it has a lot of uh, pull the plane pulls a lot so the nose bounces straight up so here, here I have a bigger curve to compensate so you have to set up for every plane but like I said you will in the beginning you just on one plane so you just Set it up for all, every plane you own, it doesn't take a long time. And you have to test it while you're flying to see how it uh, behaves. So yeah, that's uh, it. So, to set up your gun sight, uh, we have to go on a quick mission. And you want to click on skirmish and choose your flight. Your plane, I mean. And take Albatross TVA. And uh, on the left here, you want to drag it all the way down. So you start at the runway. And for enemy planes, you just uh, take zeros, you just turn it off, so you don't get interfered. So, yeah, we can basically just uh, start now. Yeah, so now we're in the game. Usually start with a map and some briefing, not important at the moment. Uh, the first uh, thing you want to do before you start flying is uh, getting into your cockpit is go to hangar. And mostly rookie mistake I see, especially on multiplayer, is that they fly with 100% fuel. Uh, that makes your plane very heavy and not very maneuverable. So with this plane, I would take it down to 20 or 30% fuel. 20 is enough, like with this you can fly for an hour, with with 100% fuel you can fly for 5 hours, nobody fly that long, no missions last that long in the game anyway, so especially multiplayer you maybe just survive for 10 minutes or after you shot up all your bullets you have to land anyway, so 
then it's no point to just have 20% with this. I, I don't, I'm not so familiar with this plane, I haven't flown it in a long time. So, some planes I just use 7% fuel or 10% fuel because they use very little. And uh, next thing is ammunition 500 bullets, 1000 bullets. Some like to fly with 500 because they say the plane is even lighter and more maneuverable. I like 1000 bullets because I like to shoot down more planes usually in a in one uh, run because with 500 bullets you may be just able to shoot that one or two planes depends how good you are and uh, here are some the DLC stuff that you can buy for planes I talked about earlier so for this plane I have a gun sight and altimeter and bullet counter I'll use thermometer for this uh, tutorial and uh, so you can see how the engine work uh, also rookie mistake they fly with the uh, Lewis overwing gun. Think, ah, now I have uh, one, two, three machine guns. I will kill more. No, nope. you will probably just die because this makes your plane very heavy and also cause a lot of drag. So you lose speed and uh, a bit maneuverability. So just fly with it off. Here are just some cosmetic stuff white scarf, uh, streamer. Uh, streamers online. If you see a plane with a streamer, that's uh, this cloth hanging down from the wing. Usually just used for wing leaders in a squadron, but uh, if you see a, a plane with a streamer online, that means it's a player, because AI don't have streamers. And you can have a, also have a pistol or a weapon, so... that You can shoot at other planes with it, but you have to be really close to hit them, and it's very hard and doesn't do much damage. But if you manage to hit a pilot, then you can kill him, but... Nobody used this, not in a dogfight, you have no chance, uh, so it's just for fun, basically. And also what you can do with it is that uh, you can kill yourself. If you aim down between your joystick area and seat, you can shoot your own pilot, and uh, you can take suicide, so commit suicide. I do that if the plane catches fire and starts to burn, because then your pilot will be dead anyway. So I just shoot, I shoot myself. They did that in real life too, they gave revolvers to pilots to... Shoot themselves if their plane catch it, uh, catch fire. So yeah, now we're basically ready. So you can just click uh, start, and then it will spawn on the runway. And uh, uh, default is that um, you will start like with uh, this view with this plane, something like uh, this maybe. And uh, so that, and right click your mouse button to get. Uh, to see your mouse and you can choose to put on some stuff, some important things. Yeah. So usually this is the gun side of the game when you start with it. You can use this for aiming. Uh, it's very bad, you don't see that much of the plane you're shooting at and it's... I don't like it. Uh, so what you want to do first is that uh, you want to align your head with a proper gun sight. So I showed you earlier the pilot head movement keys, you map those, so you just... Um, move so you see like your gun sight here and uh, then you save the view and it's click F10 but before you do that um, some of your planes that you get in the game they start with this aligned perfectly it looks like because uh, the gun sight is usually in the middle of the plane or something so but what you want still want to do is that you just want to um, well, first you want to take your throttle all the way back, and then you want to press E to start the engine. Now we started. So what you want to do is that uh, you can't shoot until the propeller runs, and that's because the machine gun is aligned with a chain that goes to the propeller engine, because they made it so that uh, when you shoot the machine gun, the machine gun will only fire when the propeller is not in the way. So you don't uh, shoot off your own propeller. It was a very smart uh, mechanical thing they invented. So now you want to shoot and see where the bullet goes. So then you just want to um, you just want to zoom all the way in, a bit up here, zoom the wall in, and you will start shooting. And as you can see, the bullet flies a bit too high of this compared to the side. So I like to dodge a bit here. So I see like the bullets are yeah. They go like, they go between, you see the bullets go between this valley in a way in the cross side. So this is a good way. 
So after you've done that, you just, just click the reset zoom button, so you're like zoomed out normally. And you click uh, F10 or Control F10 to save the snap view. And this will be your default view for this plane uh, for the room forever. Yeah. And uh, then you want to um, check your radiator. That was also the rookie mistake I talked about earlier. First, you see as I move the radiator axis, you see it opens and closes. So this is like this is closed position, uh, like because this here is your radiator. And uh, what it does is that it makes your um, engine cooler because when you fly you get a lot of wind into your radiator and uh, that wind will go into the radiator and through these pipes here and down into your engine and cool it off. So, But now it's closed even though it looks like it's open but this is closed position because now you open it because this open means that the more open it is the more air will your engine get. So now when the wind comes in it will catch the wind and go down into your engine. And here you see the thermometer, how um, how um, warm your engine is. So yeah, around 70 here is good, that's like starting. But when it starts to come across this red line here, you should be careful. And when it reaches 90, 90 or 100, it starts to vent. And by venting, it means like you get this... Uh, you see the back of the plane you're flying, you see a white trail of white smoke coming from your uh, engine. That means it's way too hot. And uh, new players, you see, fly Albatross, and you see uh, if you see a white trail of smoke behind them, you know uh, it's a new player. He doesn't know how to set up, he hasn't set up his control correctly. So, yeah, that's um, basically the most important thing of the game. And you have, like I said, I have mapped my. Um, this is the yaw, that's the rudder pedals, bank your plane left and right, and uh, now push my joystick forward and backward, that means like the plane will go down, now it will go up, and as you can see on the side here, uh, how you roll, now I take my joystick left and right, and it will roll to the side. So that, that's all the controls you need to fly the plane, and the throttle of course, uh, here. Push it forward, back, so all this you should have mapped by now, if you followed what I said earlier. And also what's important is that if you press Control i you will see the uh, controls of your every plane. So I do that every time when I buy when I bought a new plane, I press Control r to see what controls it had and see like, okay, hey, this is radiator, this is throttle. And that means that's all this plane has. If it has mixture, it will say here too. So and that's pretty important. And here is like compass and you have uh, time. So, and you can also... If you right-click your mouse, you will get uh, this menu, and you can also remove it with this here. Um, aiming help, it's only on if you have chosen it in the difficulty settings. Um, so It's default on on, but it, it will not work if you have chosen to turn it off in the settings before you start the mission. So yeah, and as you can see also down here, like as you can see now the radiator is fully open. Opening this like a mouth, and when I close it, it closes here. Now it's closed here, but you, here you see that now the air will just go through the radiator and not into the engine, so fully open. So what you want to do now to take off, uh, there's some important things to do before you take off. Make sure that you are ready with your uh, rudder pedals, because you need to move the plane a bit left and right. And also, when you, when you take off, you want to push your throttle fully forward, and as you do that, you will also want to push a bit forward on your joystick to move the plane more straight on the runway because if the plane looks too much up when you're taking off it will not get that much speed and it can actually stall and uh, you can get a small spin or stall uh, right after you try to take off and it will crash so I'll just show you very quick now how I do it I just full throttle move you see I move my uh, rudder pedals my jaw back and forth to stabilize the plane now I push it a bit to the right keep it there then I push my joystick a bit forward not too much because if you put this push it too much you will the propeller will hit the ground and you just keep it like this you see and now it's just the basic plane just takes off by itself and now we're in there so yeah so how to control the plane is like uh, I move my rudder pedals you see it goes back and forward like this 
like left and right and uh, you want your joystick push it forward it goes down put backwards the plane goes up and you to the side it will roll so how to turn the plane you just um, roll it and then you push back on your uh, joystick and as you can see it moves but you can also compensate so I can also instead of instead of rolling left I can also uh, just use my uh, this one to steer the plane into a rolling position so now I just use my rudder pedals the jaw to the left you see and the plane it turns and I pull back on my joystick so now I just use my rudder pedals to move it left and right and uh, pull back on my joystick so this is something you just have to practice to get a feel of it's like riding a bicycle you, you can't explain someone how to do it you just they just have to get on the bike and do it same with planes and as you can see now the um, temperature here of my uh, plane it's uh, it's starting to be a bit cold, colder you see it goes down to 50 it's okay but don't let it go under 40 or around 30 air because then the engine will be too cold so then how to concentrate actually just open it a little bit to see it rises so with this plane I don't fly it with fully open I just fly it with 90% open the radiator so just a little tad here so that then it keeps around 70 all the time so I don't have to adjust it so but you every plane is different so you just have to figure it out for every plane you fly um, yeah, also one thing I forgot to mention earlier, options, uh, controls, uh, pilot head controls, you should have head zoom, I use that for my joystick, uh, head zoom is very important, you use that all the time in the game to zoom in and out of, to see your targets and when you're in combat, so when you're shooting on a plane it's, it's not so wise to be so much zoomed in because it's very easy to, you feel like you bounce much around, so it's better to be a bit zoomed out. Uh, it feels better when you're aiming. Um, yeah, so... And I can also show you if I open the radiator, uh, not close it completely. Uh, you see the temperature will rise very fast since the engine gets no cool air. And some also use this as a tactic, like they're in a dogfight situation and uh, they get a bit shot at and they want to escape, so they just uh, close the radiator and wait a bit and white stream will come from the plane and then it can, then the other player can think, ah, that took damage, damage, so he, he don't give you more attention, he will just focus on the other planes who are more healthy, you know, not damaged, so... So if you want to escape home, if you're a bit damaged and shut up, and you, or you have no bullets, let's say you have no bullets left, and you want to escape home, and a guy's chasing you, just open your radiator completely, and uh, it will start to vent uh, some uh, white stream very soon. Uh, it should start now, so it's over, almost over 90. And you can fly actually pretty long with this without dam damaging the engine. The engine can handle quite, quite some heat. So, um, you can fly maybe 15 or 15, 10 or 15 minutes with it, I think, with this plane. Not sure, but I think so, without damaging the engine. So, yeah. Now it starts to be almost 100, and yeah, now you see there's a white smoke coming from, from uh, our plane here. So, that's pretty, that's a, that's a rookie mistake, you see it all the time on the server. So yeah, let's land this uh, thing, just uh, try to uh, fly back to our airport, see if we can find it somewhere, yeah, it's over there, behind that, next to that little city. So now I just uh, open my radiator again to pull the engine. What I usually like to do, like you see, okay, now this is like almost like a kilometer distance here to this one or two kilometers away this airport so what I want to like it to do is just apply shut down your throttle completely take your throttle to zero and you fly down and you see here um, in front of you you see your hair you see your uh, rpm meter you don't want to go over 1600 rpm so if I see as I op open my throttle more you see it almost goes up to 1600 if it goes over 1600 it will damage your engine so when you dive, you always want to close your throttle. Uh, if you go into a steep dive, just just uh, take the throttle to zero and just uh, to save your engine. So, like I said, 
when I'm on land, I just uh, take my throttle to zero, get as close to the ground as I can possible, and I fly towards my airport. Reason for that is that if there's enemy planes nearby, you don't want to be high up before you land. You do want to be close to the ground as possible, so they don't see you. And um, now I just keep flying towards the airbase, and as I have zero throttle, the plane, yeah, it's now I touch the ground. It was a bit bad. Um, uh, bad landing, so I'll show you a better one. So just fly a bit away, full throttle. It also good, also isn't good to open your uh, radiator completely, so that your plane will have more drag when you have open radiator. It goes a bit slower, so that's also good when you land. You don't want to have any speed uh, basically when you touch, at, when at very little speed as you touch down. So throttle zero, turn the plane to lose some speed. And uh, try to get down. And as you can see, as I as I come closer to the airport, my plane starts to fall down. And it, when it, when it falls down a bit, you should just slowly pull your joystick towards you, so the nose goes up. And you just want to keep it like this. And the closer you get to ground, pull more and more, and so your nose goes up and touch down. The best touch down is that if the um, front wheel touches just a second before your back wheel uh, hits the ground. And as you land the ground you want to move your rudder pedals, your jaw, and you want to pull joystick all the way back to, to make, because when you pull it all the way back it makes the plane push the back wheel hard to the ground and you also cause some drag to make it stop very quick. So yeah. That was basically it, uh, tutorial for ISO flight, I had to set it up and uh, fly and land, and take off. And uh, later I will do some tutorials about dogfighting and uh, also how to install mods for the game and also the multiplayer uh, session, how to join a multiplayer game and do some show you the tricks there. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video, so see you in the next one, bye.